Hi everybody, my name is Dean Parsons, I'm a certified sand instructor. I teach 515 and also 418 as well. I want to talk to you today in this SANS ICS security brief about something called the sliding scale of cybersecurity. Now the big question is where do you fit in the sliding scale of cybersecurity today for your ICS security program? We're going to walk through what the sliding scale is and first and foremost it is a model for cybersecurity. It has a number of categories of actions, but also investments to kind of contribute to your security program. This is a guide that helps you establish a target maturity for your program and also encourages growth of the security program over time. This slotting scale of cybersecurity does have five categories in it, and each of them have different uh, return of investment, if you will, with regards to your investments and what you get from it from a security perspective. At the bottom of the list, we have architecture, followed by passive defense, then active defense, intelligence, and offense as well. Now, each one of these is broken down as follows. On the basic bottom of the scale, we're talking about architecture, which implies you're designing, establishing, and maintaining systems with security in mind from the get-go. Beyond that, you're going to build on top of architecture with passive defenses. This is systems providing defense without consistent, constant human interaction. So almost sort of a technology that it's sort of set and forget, but you can't stop there. Moving beyond passive defense, we have active defense. And this is the distinguishing factor here between the passive defense. In active defense, you have human analysts monitoring and proactively making changes in the environment to reduce threats or to respond to threats already in the environment. Beyond that, we have intelligence, the maturity area where you're collecting data, refining that data into information, giving it context, and producing threat intelligence. You can share that with the community or share that and use it internally to your network as well. Beyond that, at the top in red, we have offense, sort of a self-defense against the adversaries, which typically we see nation states perform, but not generally a lot of industrial control systems outside of that realm. Now, in general, where should you be today? We're really hoping you're here in the active defense area of the sliding scale. This is really where we should be today based on the threat landscapes. And again, this is the process of analysts monitoring for, responding to, and learning for adversaries and threats internal to your industrial control network. Keyword here again is analysts, people, humans looking at the network and then responding as a result of finding things in the network or making proactive changes to reduce incidents in the first place. Now, if we take a look at the value versus the cost about how much you're going to spend in general and how much resources will you need for each of these phases, on the left, we see the value towards security. At the bottom, we see architecture, which really costs not a whole lot. It's extremely affordable to make sure you have architecture done correctly. Beyond that, you're going to build on top of architecture again, and you're going to put in the passive defense areas, which costs uh, a little bit more, but again, you still get a lot of return of investments. And then active defense in the middle here, we have that sweet spot where it, it does cost money, absolutely, and you get a lot of benefit from it. And that's really where we're suggesting organizations be today. You can see as well, as you go up that value towards security, you become more and more costly to get that protection you may or may not want in your maturity level in the sliding scale. So if we apply this concept and idea to the industrial control system sector, we can kind of map it towards architecture, passive defense, and the active defense in this way. Architecture, again, we're looking at the architecture of the network, but also building systems with security in mind. An example for ICS is the engineering systems are maintained as engineering systems. Security patching is done when it's suitable for the industrial control system area to do that, prioritizing safety first. But of course, the network architecture as well as part of the sliding scale here, which means using something like the Purdue model or the ICS 410 SCADA reference model as well to add security in your network to create things like boundaries and zones. Going beyond architecture and building on top of it with passive defense, we have defense in-depth strategies for industrial controls, such as firewalls that understand the industrial control protocols to zone off your industrial control environments, boundary zones as an example as well. Passive defenses can also be ICS-specific allow listing antivirus solutions and also passive ICS-specific intrusion detection systems for the network. Beyond that, and this is the sweet spot where we all strive to be today as a best practice, it's active defense where we have 
trained ICS security analysts that understand the industrial control system pro uh, protocols, also the engineering aspects of the processes, and of course, really pay attention to safety and prioritize safety as well. So where are we? Just to recap this SANS ICS security brief, we have architecture, passive defense, active defense, intelligence, and also offense. That makes up the sliding scale of cybersecurity. Mapping that out, of course, you can consider things like the cost versus value towards security as you target one of these areas and grow in through one of these areas in the sliding scale. Number two is active defense really is the industry standard for industrial control systems today. That's where we should be based on the threat that's, that we're actually facing out there on a regular basis for our utilities and other ICS areas. So the idea is to build a strong foundation first, starting with architecture, and then move past that to the passive defense, and then of course build at least to active defense and so on and so forth. That should be your target in ICS, the active defense areas. All right, thank you for your time today. If you're looking to attend the ICS 515 class, which we discussed this further, please take a look here. ICS Defense is doable. I'm looking forward to seeing you in class soon.